Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. This is from IIT Kanpur, I am Ravi Chandran from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. This is being given to you in the form of uh, NPTEL MOOC course and this is the last week, week number 8, the last module and the last lecture. So, the moment I say last lecture, uh, I feel little bit uh, sentimental and overwhelmed to realize the fact that it was just like yesterday we started this and then 8 weeks have passed so quickly and then about 48 lectures have gone so successfully, so effectively and so meaningfully and we are at the last lecture and what thoughts I have on the last lecture and we are going to conclude this course. I thought what else other than to give you some more general suggestions, tips on developing your life skills in terms of human relations and particularly in terms of developing trust and integrity. Before I start this, let me go back to our previous lecture, the seventh module in which I focused on the art of reading and taught you some techniques for effective reading. I particularly focused on some of the most important techniques that will help you to do effective reading starting with previewing and sampling. Previewing helps you to eliminate what you do not want to read and choose the one that you like to read. So, you can especially if long materials are there and you do not have time to read, so then follow the technique of reading only the first two paragraphs and reading only the first and last sentences of remaining paragraphs and reading only the last two paragraphs. But you also gather some general information from other previewing possibilities such as the back flap and the small tiny information about critical reviews which are written on the book. Then I talked about skimming. Skimming is glancing through the keywords very quickly and uh, trying to identify them. Usually the key words are hidden in the topical sentences and sometimes they are the core words and if you remove it, you the entire sentence will fall, it will not give any meaning. Skimming is very helpful in reading newspapers, magazines, travel brochures or any light reading stuff or any book that you want to read lightly and understand what is the gist of that. Skimming helps. Scanning will help you if you want to read a text quickly in order to find specific information such as some figures or names or some dates or some time or some uh, age okay, or the year. So, scanning will help you to do that very quickly. But the next important reading technique that I taught you was about clustering while you read because most of us have developed reading in a very rotten manner by reading word by word or reading letter by letter and not letting our reading progress in a rapid manner because of this habit. We need to kill this habit by trying to use our eyes, attract the words in groups. Now, if you can do that, attract the words in groups as I gave you some illustrative examples, it will help you to get quick and full comprehension of whatever you are trying to read, whether it is light or hard, whether it is long or small. However, you would not become a really professional reader, you will not become the most powerful reader unless you also try to do something about close reading, at least in some novels that you read or some serious philosophical books that you read, where you should read for appreciation not only for just gathering information and knowledge. There is a uh, line from T. S. Eliot that says, April is the cruelest month. Now, the first line from his famous uh, poem, Wasteland indicates, for a close reader, 
why this April, which is supposed to be spring and then uh, birds, every uh, flowers, they are all in, all in full blossom. Why is he saying that this is the cruelest month? So, it gives you more uh, chance for thinking further and you understand that he is trying to portray something happened during the world wars and then he is trying to bring the aftermath of that. So, even that April is mixing later he says that uh, the memory with desire. So, people who are dead and gone and then uh, roots are coming out of that. So, there is this burial and then uh, resurrection. So, this kind of theme is brought out. So, he starts loading his poem in the first sentence itself, George Orwell in uh, 1984. So, the clock will strike 13 at the beginning of the novel. Now, 13 striking 13 instead of 12 is something that recalls our attention immediately. Why is it it is striking 13 instead of 12? When you think deeply and then when you go through the text further, you understand that 13 happens only in maritime army zones where uh, uh, they use this uh, clock 13, 14, 15. So, instead of saying 1 o'clock or 1 p.m. or a.m. Now, only when army or military is using this kind of clock, in the first line itself uh, the writer is trying to indicate that expect the dictatorial uh, setup from my novel. It is about totalitarian society, it is about a society that is completely uh, dominated by military setup and where there is no freedom of speech. Now, you see how he is indicating just by the word 13. Okay. So, in order to appreciate, in order to know what it means, in order to go for the inner and in depth meanings, you need to do close reading. In fact, in order to do close reading, initially you can also read critical materials available on some of these books that you are interested in reading. Either you read the critical materials first and go to these novels or read the novels and then read the materials. Both way it will enhance your reading uh, and then your ability to appreciate this uh, literature or uh, philosophical materials. At the end of it, I suggested that if at all you want to develop one healthy addiction that should be for reading. So, read 24 into 7 anything but at least focus reading for 3 hours in a day. So, that is going to make you really a knowledgeable wise person, a learned person and a scholar and an elitist scholar. So, try to uh, develop this reading habit. TV is not going to help you or watching anything on video is not going to help you. Uh, even this program we are giving it on video because just to remove the uh, distance. But ideally speaking, you will learn more. So, if you are if you are able to read corresponding uh, topics at your own uh, pace and all that, although we have made it as a very self-contained uh, videos. But apart from this, do not be satisfied with this, try to read on your own, develop interest in reading anything. The next uh, golden rule I uh, left in conclusion is that if you read anything whatever that interests you, whatever you start reading, try to finish it. So, do not leave it in the middle. So, that is another key for uh, success. Okay. That is about reading which is a very fundamental skill you need to develop and then enhance and use it effectively in order to promote your other soft skills which are again uh, related with communication such as writing, speaking, even listening. Now, so much so about the previous one, let us look at this module where my focus is on human relations and here I just want you to recall some of the points with which I started before, but I just want to highlight certain other aspects of human relations. At the beginning itself I told you human relations are the ones that are going to contribute to your success as well as failure. It is the people around you who will give you success and it is the people around you who will contribute to your failure. It is your happiness or sorrow, both are contributed by human relations. Living a remorseless life that is living a very harmonious life without any regret 
or even deciding to commit suicide that again is depending on your human relations. The moment your human relationship fails, so you think of committing suicide in marital relationships, people go for uh, divorce. Okay. Now, all are failure in terms of human relations. So, you should remember that it is very important to maintain this. One golden rule that can help you to maintain good human relations is that you should always remember to treat others as how you want to be treated by those people, others in general. So, if you want others to respect you, you should respect them. If you want others to love you, you should love them. If you want others to sympathize with you, show compassion to you, you should sympathize and you should show compassion. So, if you want others to help you in critical situations, you should offer help in the first instance. Okay. So, this is a mutual cause and effect kind of thing that works in human relations and always treat others. If you want others to treat you with dignity and you do not want them to harm your self respect, reciprocate give the same thing to others. And in any relationships do not bring power struggles. If at all you bring understand that it will be leading to a win lose situation and then if you think you win you will always lose in uh, uh, human relationships. If you think you win your boss, but you again lose your job. If you think that you win over your wife, but then it can lead to divorce. If you think that you won your uh, son or uh, daughter, again it can lead to further communication gap and breakup of uh, relationships. So, it has to be win-win in terms of uh, human relations. So, do not use power struggles power if at all you need to use. Remember what John Aston has to say, power is the ability to do good things. Use power, if you are in a powerful position, sometimes the position itself gives you some power. If you are a senior student, the position is giving you power. If you are a husband, it is giving you power. If you are a wife, it is also giving you power. If you are a mother, it is giving you power. Now, use this power to empower people around you. So, if you are at the higher level of hierarchy, try to build up those who are at the lower level in terms of giving support, in terms of empowering them. Often in terms of uh, man-woman relationship, trust is not built. So, that leads to so many problems. Once a man and woman has decided to leave as husband and wife in the same home, secrets are kept secrets are kept in mobile phones. Okay. So, husband cannot see wife's phone and vice versa. Financial transactions are hidden from each other. Money is not kept in the common place where both can use it whenever they need it. Talk such as your money, my money comes. Okay. You use your money for that, I will use my money for this. Who are you to ask me when I am using my money to buy that expensive gift? Who are you to stop me to do that? Okay. So, the moment this kind of talk comes, okay, when it is something that has to be built commonly in trust, so friction will come. In fact, uh, in uh, again in uh, this uh, uh, relationships, one of the key ways to check whether the relationship is stable or not is to see how they are talking about money, how they are free with money. Can the money be kept safely in a place where the children do not steal money from the father's or father's pocket or mother's handbag? The children do not cheat or the wife is not taking money from husband's pocket or the husband is afraid of giving the ATM pin to the wife. Now, these are levels of trust. Now, once you want to build trust, so you have to trust and then trust is something that you have to give first. You have to be trustworthy, okay, so that you can actually make the other person also trustworthy. This should happen between parents and children, so they should be able to trust each other. Children should realize that after all parents are doing certain things with the best of intentions and parents should realize that 
children or their children and they will not commit mistakes and they may be ethically correct instead of their doubts and suspicions. Teachers and students again uh, relationship has to be maintained in terms of trust. Manager and workers, it is very important that uh, trust has to be built to both sides, manager as well as workers. Along with that, you should also try to maintain integrity. Integrity is to do with your character, to do with your uh, ability to keep things morally right, wrong, to do with your emotional intelligence, it is to do with your spiritual competence. As it is said that uh, when uh, money is lost or when wealth is lost, nothing is lost because you can always regain wealth. But when health is lost, something is lost and when character is lost, everything is lost. To build up a character, to build that character with integrity and add trust to it sometimes takes years. You take 10 years, 20 years, 30 years to build relationship and then build that with the integrity and trust, but you can break it in fraction of second. So, while building integrity, it means moral soundness in terms of character and principles, but never preach something that you do not follow. If you are drinking at home or if you are drinking outside, okay, you cannot tell your uh, children or your wife that they should not drink because you know that it is a bad thing, but you are doing for yourself. If you are smoking, you cannot tell anybody that you stop smoking. I remember uh, an incident with uh, Mahatma Gandhi that uh, all of you might be knowing. The mother went to Gandhi and then uh, she said that uh, her son is eating so much of sweets. So, Gandhi said that uh, and she said if you tell him, he will stop it. So, Gandhi just told her that could you come after uh, 3 days? So, she said fine. She came after 3 days and then Gandhi said please stop eating uh, excessive sweets, it is not good for you, sugar as such is not good. So, the son said ok, but the mother was surprised, she asked Gandhiji, you could have said this 3 days before, why did you take this uh, uh, 3 days time to say the simple thing that you are telling now. So, Gandhiji said that uh, 3 days before, I was fond of sweets, okay, I was not able to resist sweets and I was taking lot of sugar and before I tell him this, I wanted to strengthen my character, I wanted to try whether I will be able to stop eating these sweets. Now, at least 3 days I have stopped completely, I have the moral fiber, moral strength to tell him that he should stop eating it. Okay. See how integrity is built, it is built in principles and character, moral soundness and they are all interlinked together and when you do not preach what you do not practice. If you really want somebody to uh, practice something good, so you do that and then you do not have to tell anybody. So, you set the example, you be the model and then people will be inspired. So, the, that is the best way to set an example. How to sustain this trust and integrity once you try to develop and build it. It looks like uh, it seems to be quite difficult, but it is not impossible. Keep certain more uh, norms in mind. Never break the trust of someone built for years, okay. whether you are representing a company, the companies develop goodwill, whether you are representing a family, whether you are representing friends, whether you are in peer groups, whether you are representing some colleagues never break the trust of someone built for years. Whatever money, whatever benefit you will get is not worth breaking the trust, because when you break the trust, you are not only uh, damaging that person, you are not only demoralizing, you are not only disappointing, causing frustration to the person, making that person upset, you are not only hurting that person, but eventually you will realize there is something in you has diminished, it has reduced you, you fall lower in your own expectations and that 
esteem level has gone low, you realize that you did a mistake and then there is no way to make amendments, you are trying to do your best. That is why you should not let someone down in impulsive moments. Impulsively you get carried away by something, you want to do something and at the cost of letting down somebody with whom you have built up trust. And remember as I have said before, circumstance does not make you, okay, you cannot say that because of the circumstance I became a victim. Circumstance actually reveals you, it brings the inner in you at crucial moments. That is why in interviews they have this situation reaction test, they will put you in stress, they will create very tough circumstance by which you can bring the best or the worst in you. Okay. So, when circumstance is compelling you to act in an aberrant manner, in an abnormal manner in which you would not do, okay, just ask yourself, especially if you are deciding to betray someone, if you are deciding to give someone an unfair treatment, ask yourself whether that person would do the same to you in the given circumstance. If the person would do the same to you in the given circumstance, in a sense you are justified in doing, although I will not say that, you, you can still have a lame excuse, but if you know for 200 percent sure that that person is not going to react to you in that manner at all, the way you are going to react now, then you are completely unjustified in giving that undeserved treatment to the person and that is not going to leave you because that person at that moment is in a vulnerable situation and you are actually exploiting that. Fyodor Dostoevsky in Crime and Punishment makes a very interesting revelation about human oppression and suppression. So, there is a, there is an innocent person who is tortured, victimized by another evil person, but that innocent person who is beaten, tortured, victimized thinks in his mind that why this guy is beating me and then I am helpless and there is nobody to help me. And the author says that even the thought that when he is thinking that he is attacking me in my vulnerable moment and the thought itself he says can harm the other person who is trying to uh, oppress in terms of vulnerable situations. So, uh, keep that in mind and overall human nature is like that, uh, people become generous, people will forget things, but then they can never forgive the wrongdoings that you might have done for them. So, even they may patch up and then they may continue with that. So, that is why you have to be extremely careful in uh, committing certain misdeeds, especially in terms of relationships that is to do with trust and integrity. Remember again, in life there is no quick fix, okay, like you have the quick fix for uh, any broken things and even there it will be written, it can fix everything except broken hearts, okay, that is the ad for them. So, broken hearts okay, and especially if you are responsible for that, it cannot fix, okay, no glue can fix it. because. Heart is such an uh, uh, emotional uh, content thing which cannot be fixed with some external uh, agents. Human relations are wrought with emotions and then emotions are not uh, like uh, materials that can be fixed or uh, replaced at our own whims and fancies. In life also there is no rewind or fast forward button. You, you cannot think that, oh, I, I will uh, hurt this person now, but I will go back and then uh, sort out everything. No, you cannot go back to the moment and then rechange it. You cannot also think that I will fast forward, I will go to some uh, future time and I will change everything, I will make amends for all these things. You need to realize that the present is crucial and you need to learn to live in the present and at this moment, if you are 
true to yourself and then if you are able to integrate you with the people around you, your past will go without any trouble, it will not chase you and your future will uh, take you without any sense of anxiety. About treating others, let me uh, tell you that two, three things in terms of uh, relationships which are very crucial, the one that parents have with their uh, children and the ones that children have with their uh, parents. Okay. As many of you have liked uh, the stories that I have been telling, I would like to end this module again by telling you two or three stories. The first story uh, is to illustrate that sometimes parents have lot of expectations. The father wanted to become an IAS officer, but then even after fourth, fifth attempt he could not become. The father wanted to become an engineer, the father wanted to become a doctor, the father wanted to crack JE and then become all India number 10 or something. But the father or the mother could not become or could not live up to their expectations and they have their unfulfilled ambitions and frustrations. They have no right to trust those unfulfilled ambitions and frustrations on their children okay. and they have to leave the children to grow and develop as per their ambitions and their desires and their inner wishes. So, this was about a father and son, they were going on a car. And then uh, the son said that uh, father try to overtake this car. So, the father tried and then he said that son it is like it is a BMW then uh, our car is a small old uh, model car and it cannot uh, beat this. Father try this one no the, and then he tries so fast and then he realizes that uh, that is an Audi and then uh, it is not possible for you to do that. Father you try this one also. So, they tried and then father tries and then he says I cannot overtake this. Four five cars the son said he could not overtake and then the son said father when you realize that your car is made up in such a manner that it can go only with the speed and it cannot overtake other cars which are built in such a manner that they can go in high speed. Why do you compare me with others? when you say that I am slow in reading and when you compare that uh, your neighbor's son is faster in reading and picking up skills, do not you realize that maybe I am made up in a particular way? Okay. Then the father realized his uh, uh, mistake and then he said sorry, but that is something that is uh, illustrative to all parents and it is an eye opener that we should realize that uh, there is a constitution, composition there is a genetic makeup, there is an environmental uh, brought up, all are contributing to the child's mindset. Okay. It is not fair to impose the parent's mindset to the children and then not to cause them frustration or not to make them feel nervous. I told you this story. But the next is from the parent side, especially when they become elders. This is one soft skill alone I would say that will determine your EQ, SQ level and that will determine your so many other th soft skills and uh, personality development in terms of all exemplary qualities that you can have that is with regard to respecting elders, the way you treat elders, the way you treat senior citizens the respect you have, the love you have for them. When I was reading Gandhiji's uh, My Experiment with the Truth, one thing that struck about uh, Gandhiji's personality was that it was said that he was always blind to the fault of elders, he was always blind to the fault of elders. That was coming out of his love and respect for them. So, if elders made a mistake, he was just blind, he, he was not complaining, he was not even pointing out to them. But in today's world, you know, so there is like all are competing with each other and even if an elder makes a mistake out of poor memory, so the younger people who are around, they get very angry, they are annoyed, they shout at the person and they uh, make the person 
so uh, nervous. Again, I remember a, a story where uh, uh, the daughter is so annoyed and then shouts at the mother for uh, uh, not able to sign that uh, check properly and not able to hold the uh, pen. So, the mother says, can you hold my hand, I will be able to put the signature. The daughter gets annoyed and she says, how many times I have to do that, do not you know that you can uh, do that easily. And then the mother says uh, politely that uh, daughter, when you started learning, hundreds of times I have held your hand and then I have never said anything to you. So, often like the children forget how they were groomed, trained by their own parents when they reach a level where they become independent. When they become much popular and much successful than their parents, when they are able to earn 10 times the money than their parents, 100 times more reputation than their parents, then sometimes arrogance, haughtiness come to them. And this is the story of one such son who became very haughty and arrogant and then uh, he uh, like thought that he has done much better than his father and he wanted his father to realize that he is at the mercy of his son. So, he did not even allow to his father to come inside and sit uh, very often and he mostly kept him outside of his huge posh bungalow and there is a small place where he will be uh, sleeping and he will be shivering in cold. And uh, he had a pet dog and the dog was also tied just next to the father. And what he will do is, uh, he will first give food to the dog and the dog finishes eating the food and then he takes the same plate and then he puts food for his father and he gives it just to show him that he can insult him and then uh, uh, father cannot do anything about it now. But the father did not say anything, so he just because he was in a vulnerable situation and there was nobody to give him food and then he was uh, eating it. The grandson used to see this, okay. every time the father comes, he will give the food to the dog and he will use the same plate and then put food for his father and then give it to the father. One day he came out and saw that the father has died, he passed away. So, uh, he took him to the cremation ground, uh, they uh, did all the last uh, rites and then uh, he came back home. When he came back home and then uh, uh, he was uh, uh, cleaning uh, everything and then uh, for the dog he came and then he kept a new plate for the dog and then he was about to throw the old plate and uh, that time the son came and he took the old plate that the dog was eating in which the, the son's grandfather was also using it. So, he took it and then uh, he uh, wanted to keep it with him. The father was surprised and then he asked the son, why are you taking this plate, it is a useless plate and then uh, we will throw it. To which the son said, when you grow old, so how will I give you food? Okay. I think I have to give you food uh, using this plate, right? I hope you uh, got the moral of the story, what you do to others is what you will get from others at a later stage. In the case of uh, the son who insulted his father, his son who is the grandson actually thought that this is the way you have to treat elder people and he learnt it from his father. So, he thought that you have to use the same plate that dog eats to give food to your uh, parents when they become old and he thinks that is what he should do is to his father also. And this is something as I was telling that this indelible mark, it cannot be removed from your mind. You, you cannot change what the child thinks by looking at your behavior 
by using any number of words, the child is not going to change uh, his or her mind. Let me tell you another interesting story before I come to the concluding thoughts of uh, this course. This is uh, uh, the scenario where uh, a very again a rich posh businessman has come to leave his father in an old orphanage home. That is because his wife has been uh, torturing him and the wife is not liking keeping his father at home and uh, they had enough arguments, so many quarrels and the father uh, himself thought that he can uh, better leave go somewhere and then uh, he suggested to the son and the son also said then uh, okay, then I will put you in this orphanage home, but do not tell them by mistake that I am your son. Okay. So, then people will think I am such a rich guy and then it will um, create bad reputation to me and at the same time he said that uh, you when you go there I will leave you and uh, come back and you tell them that I am just uh, your neighbor trying to help you and then uh, you are abandoned by other people. So, you are an orphan now. So, the father did not mind anything he said fine like at least you leave me in their uh, home. So, the son comes and then he is picking one or two bags of his cloth and there is phone call from his wife asking have you left him, have you left him, why are you so delayed, so come back uh, quickly, okay, we have to go for a uh, movie, we have to do some shopping and all that, so leave, uh, leave that old fellow and come quickly. So, he went and then the father went inside and then while going the father was uh, touched by the owner of that uh, orphanage and then uh, he greeted him very nicely and that uh, orphanage owner was uh, talking to him uh, as if they are very uh, good close friends. Okay, he was asking him uh, uh, something and all that and uh, uh, then he went inside. So, the son was taking the baggage and then he went and he kept it and came out and then uh, he was curious how is this uh, uh, orphanage owner might be knowing his uh, father. Okay. So, he went and asked him uh, like uh, sir how do you know uh, this person? Uh, then he asked uh, like uh, uh, what is your uh, relationship? and all that and he was trying to hide that he is actually his father and all that, but the other person said, so whatever it is, it is ok, but since you asked it, although this person did not want me to tell you this, but since you asked I would like to tell you. So, this person came about 40 years before and then he did not have any child and he took a child from this orphanage for growing as his only son and then he grew him up with lot of love and affection. I do not know what happened to that son now, but then uh, somebody like you has come and uh, dropped him here. So, obviously you can understand that the son was actually an orphan whom the father took from uh, this orphanage home. Later the son grew up and then became so uh, arrogant and then so cruel that he did not even realize that he could have had this kind of background and then he came and then leave uh, to leave him in this uh, orphanage. So, these are just stories to tell you that uh, treat others especially if you are uh, treating elders just try to show them respect and give them the respect they actually deserve. Now, as a concluding thought. I thought that instead of summing up the entire course, I am just going to read out a uh, poem by a very famous uh, poet and then first let me read it quickly and then explain to you and that is a kind of uh, gist of what I have been doing in this 48 lectures and this is my concluding thoughts and if you realize the, the importance of this poem then I would have actually taught my course effectively. Let me read the poem and then let me explain this to you very quickly. 
you start dying slowly if you do not travel, if you do not read, if you do not listen to the sounds of life, if you do not appreciate yourself. You start dying slowly when you kill your self esteem, when you do not let others help you. You start dying slowly if you become a slave of your habits, walking every day on the same paths. If you do not change your routine, if you do not wear different colors or you do not speak to those you do not know, you start dying slowly. If you avoid to feel passion and the turbulent emotions, those which make your eyes glisten and your heart beat fast, you start dying slowly. If you do not change your life when you are not satisfied with your job or with your love, if you do not risk what is safe for the uncertain, if you do not go after a dream, if you do not allow yourself at least once in your lifetime to run away from sensible advice, you start dying slowly. It is from a very famous poet Pablo Neruda. Let me quickly explain to you and how it is linked with our own uh, course. You start dying slowly in the sense that you do not live a meaningful life. You are gradually uh, dying and becoming useless. If you do not travel, if you do not uh, go out and see different people, if you do not read, so it is uh, literally and figuratively amounting to your brain death if you do not read. If you do not listen to the sounds of life, so the sounds of life come from birds, environment, come from children, even come from old people. If you cannot listen to the sounds of life, come from uh, friendship, good human relationships. If you do not appreciate yourself, if you all the time self criticize, if you all the time keep a low self esteem about yourself, if you are all the time jealous of somebody because you cannot uh, match up to uh, others expectations and you cannot uh, increase your uh, level, you start dying slowly. When you kill your self esteem, when you do not let others help you, you start dying slowly. So, sometimes you have to take help from others instead of thinking that it is a weakness. By taking help, you are also helping them to heal you and you are also empowering them to help you. If you become a slave of your habits, so go to our habits unit, the complete module for a week. So, if you, if you are not able to change your bad habits, you will only become slave and walking every day on the same path. If you are, if you are doing the same thing again and again, you are actually dying. If you do not change your routine, if you do not wear different colors, wear different colors means not just dress, but trying different roles in your life, trying taking different risks in your life or you do not speak to those you do not know. That is using your uh, communication skills, developing your soft skills, meeting people of different culture, going to different regions, traveling. If you do not talk to different people whom you have never seen before, uh, the author says you start dying slowly. If you avoid to feel passion, so some people are afraid of committing into human relations and the turbulent emotions, some people avoid relations fearing that it will hurt you. So, then again he says those which make your eyes glisten. So, sometimes you have to take sorrow as normal part of life and your heart beat fast, you start dying slowly. If you do not change your life, so life you should keep changing frequently. When you are not satisfied with your job for example or with your life, so there is no point in sticking to things which is not satisfying you and causing you frustration, then it is moment to change that. If you do not risk what is safe for the uncertain, fearing that you will always be in your comfortable zone and you do not want to leave that, so then again uh, you are sort of dying gradually. If you do not go after a dream, what are you are visualizing in your life, if you do not allow yourself at least once in your lifetime to run away from sensible advice, 
advice given by parents, advice given by teachers, advice given by bosses. So, lots of uh, people are there to give you advice, but at least once you should be able to think something what is applicable to you and your life and to even avoid that kind of advice and try to lead your own life. He says, if you do not do it, you start dying slowly. So, I leave you with this thought whether you want to die slowly or live in a very fast paced life actively, rigorously. So, take a re-look at our lessons uh, starting from the first one and till the last one. As I said, this poem very appropriately sums up whatever I have been trying to tell you. If you liked the entire course, uh, I would like to request you to join the next course that will start uh, after this is fully completed uh, and this will be slightly at a higher level that is enhancing your uh, soft skills and personality. So, you have developed now, but you need to enhance, you need to hone your skills. So, that course will help you to do that at a very professional level also. I thank you all of you for uh, watching all these uh, videos, you have been very patient, you are very actively participating and you have actually inspired me to uh, do all these uh, lectures in a very interesting and very useful manner, it is all to your feedback. Thank you so much for your feedback, you can also uh, send your uh, feedback as you have been doing all the time. So, I wish you all success. I am sure that these lectures will help you. Whenever you are in crisis, even look at some particular uh, lectures that will try to help you. Keep writing to me and if I can help you in uh, uh, any possible form, I will try to help you also. Wish you all the best, all success and thank you for watching all these videos and this video in particular. See you in the next course, next lecture. Thank you again, have a very nice day.